why toppling Confederate statues is wrong. Mr. Reagan. Obviously, the destruction of public property is wrong, technically. And I think ethically, in many of these cases, is absolutely wrong. But there are many other reasons why these rage riots, knocking down statues, this, this racial conflict, why all of this kind of Confederate statue toppling is wrong. There's many points, but the first point I would like to make is that I think it's important to respect the values of those who came before you. Now, I'm not saying we have to say that every culture has great values, and that could be our own culture back in time. In certain times in history, we can look back and we can say that those people had you know, bad values. They had twisted values, bad values. I, 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 accept, I accept that that can be true. Certainly, slavery, I think, was a bad value. Many people at the time thought it was a bad value. We, in fact, fought a war over it being a bad set of values. But the people who put up those statues, they were not necessarily commemorating men because they believed slavery was a good idea or because they hated black people. I think they, a lot of these guys, they put up these statues because they were nostalgic for a time that seemed exciting or interesting. Their grandfather maybe had been telling them about stories about the war and historic moments and little things that happened in the war that you know are lost to history now, but that those men thought, wow, what, a, what an exciting time, what a crazy war that was fought. Wow, you guys really fought bravely. That was, we should you know, commemorate you guys with, with statues for the bravery of fighting in a war, not necessarily because of the the meaning that that war has for people, you know, a hundred years later. You, you, you cannot just look at something from your own perspective and then say, this is, this is pure evil because I don't like it, right? You have to look at it in a more nuanced way. Right, I'm going to get into all the other problems that I have with toppling the Confederate statues in one moment. First, of course, I have to sell you something. Political correctness is a disease that has infected too many institutions in America. There is huge societal pressure to say exactly the right thing, to be politically correct. Don't joke about this. Elevate these groups. Condemn these other groups, etc. Now, if you don't go along with this, you're actually an impressive person. Why? Because it's dangerous. Defying the woke mob is a sign of character. It's a sign of intellectual courage. And that is impressive. Since the chaos of the pandemic, you may now need to start hiring people again for your company. But how do you avoid all the wokeness? This is why right now you should check out unwoke.hr. Unwoke.hr is the job recruitment platform for free thinkers. We live in crazy times right now, and you want to hire courageous, free-thinking, and freedom-loving individuals, not ideologues whose only agenda is to weaponize your brand and your business to further their radical cause. Unwoke HR is 100% free for everyone. That means you don't pay a single dime to start hiring the best and brightest people that society has to offer. So check out unwoke.hr and hire free thinkers, not activists. The link is in the description below. And I really do think this is a phenomenal service. So if you really, if you have a business, or you own a company, and you want to hire really smart, brilliant people who are not susceptible to this woke craziness that's going on, you really should uh, look at this site and maybe try to advertise, advertise your business there to try to bring in new talent. Link is in the description below. If you own a business, you need to hire somebody, just click on it right now. You can always come back to the video. A lot of these guys, the statues that were put up, maybe they were racist men. Okay, I accept that many of them maybe were, but that shouldn't necessarily define them. They may have been the best guys in the world, really just top-notch, amazing men that did amazing things for their community, fantastic people, but they were also racists. Should that be a shadow that completely eclipses everything about their character because they were racist? Being racist doesn't automatically make you evil, okay? And I know people watching this being like, yes, it does. You know, white racist people were the most evil people on the planet ever. Look, if you want to say being racist makes you evil, you have to say that the vast majority of people around the world are pure evil, okay? Because if you travel at all, I mentioned this in many videos, but if you travel at all, what you find is that racism is not just accepted in other cultures, it's a massive part of the culture. It's a fundamental aspect of the culture. So if you're going to say, that because somebody maybe was racist, they're pure evil, they should never have a statue to them, nobody should ever respect them ever again. You've really got to say that about just about everybody on the planet. The only people who have a strong ethic against racism 
is white Americans and some white Europeans and Australians, different white countries, white civilizations around the world. We're the ones that have the ethic against racism. If you go into the black community, you ask people if they're racist, most of them will say yes. So are all black people evil because they're racist? Are all Hispanic people evil because they're racist? If you go to Africa, they might hate the tribe next door. Does that make them all evil? Of course not. There's lots of people who have biases. That doesn't just make them purely evil. I don't understand why white people have to live with this unbelievably perfect standard. White people have a standard that is so high that nobody could, no, no civilization could rise to that level, right? If you have one racist white person, well, then all white people are condemned, right? Any white person does anything mildly that may mildly seem racist, that's proof that there is systemic racism everywhere and white people are just pure evil. But there's a lot of people in the world that will say openly that they're racist, right? And they're not white people, so that's okay, though. That's okay. They're not so bad. It's stupid that we have this bizarrely high standard and nobody else does. It's insane. Now, here's the craziest thing, I think, about toppling Confederate statues of these horrible racists that we need to never have a statue to ever or anything like that. Many of the statues that they're toppling aren't even of Confederates. They're, they're not even of racist white men. Many of them are of abolitionists, northern soldiers, presidents who fought against slavery. I mean, it's insane. A lot of the toppling seems to be totally arbitrary. People aren't toppling statues for a reason anymore, okay? They're just toppling statues because statues represent white men and the past, right? Like, okay, so white Europeans developed a very sophisticated society. A sophisticated society that was very powerful, very wealthy, very powerful, had interesting inventions, had cool stuff, had a high quality of life. Everybody wanted to be a part of that world, right? Certainly, some Africans were brought over here as slaves and they're forced to be part of this new sophisticated civilization. So they were brought against their will. But most people want to come here. There's Africans that today are trying desperately to get to America or to Europe. Right. You, you see people dying, you know, trying to travel to Europe in these overloaded ships and these ships are capsizing and killing all the people on board. And they're 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 doing this because they desperately want to get to Europe. They definitely want to get to the sophisticated civilization that white people created. And a lot of people today, and I think this is the Marxist influence that I was talking about in a previous video, the Marxists have kind of poisoned the mind of a lot of young people today and said, look, the people who developed that civilization, they were all evil people because X, Y, or Z. They were misogynists or they were bigots, you know, they were slave owners or they were racists or something like that, right? And certainly they had their flaws, but they did develop Western civilization as we know it, something that we should all be grateful for and appreciate. No one is perfect. If we, de if we decided today that the only people who could have statues to them are perfect people, and I can't take credit for this, I think I heard it on Fox News or something like that, the only person that would, we would be able to make statues to would be Jesus Christ. It's the only statues that we could have. And there's even this white guy who pretends to be black by the name of Sean King, who actually suggested that we topple statues of Jesus Christ because the depictions of Jesus Christ in you know, Western civilization are all white, right? He's depicted as white. And a lot of people think Jesus Christ is black or Middle Eastern looking or something like that. But the point is, look, nobody's perfect. We recognize that people have flaws and we build statues to them anyway, right? That, that, that's, that's been true throughout history. Just because a small band of nasty young people don't like somebody for a very specific reason, they do not have the right to topple that statue. And in fact, all of the mayors and the city council members and all these people that are accepting the criticisms of the Black Lives Matter organizers and the Antifa folks and saying, okay, yeah, you know what? We're actually going to take down that statue of Lincoln because you guys, you guys say that you don't like it because you think he was a racist or some stupid thing. Oh, oh what? You, you think Martin Luther King was a bad guy? Okay, we'll take that down too. I mean, that's next. Martin Luther King is next. Why? Maybe because he wasn't violent. What, Martin Luther King wasn't violent against white people? Oh, he needs to get taken. He was too nice. He was an Uncle Tom, that Martin Luther King. He was too nice to white people. Right? You know that's coming. You know that's coming. Somebody's going to criticize Martin Luther King as, as, a, as some kind of like 
race traitor or something. It's, ridic it's ridiculous. Their whole philosophy is insane, right? It's, 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 they live in a fantasy world. All right, my next point. Slavery is over. A long time ago, actually. I don't know if you're aware of this. In America, anyway, the white slavery of black people, right? It, that ended how, like, over 100 years ago, actually. Believe it or not. Nobody alive today lived through that time. Nobody experienced that time. Nobody experienced the Civil War that's alive today. There is no personal effect that anyone has from looking at these statues. The only effect that people have are, is the vague knowledge that they have from bad public schooling. Where you have these teachers that are constantly injecting into the minds of these poor young students these ideas that, oh, you should, you should hate white people from 100 years ago because they, you know, they were all bad. They were all bad people, which was not true. I mean, they weren't all bad people. Right? That, that's just not true. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vicious, nasty lie. I don't know why that they infect students' minds with these ideas. But all these young people come up with the idea that everybody historically that was white was bad, and everybody historically that was Mexican or black or something like that, they're all good, perfect angels. Right? It's ridiculous. And so nobody really should be emotionally affected by looking at a freaking statue of a Civil War soldier. I don't care what side he was on. But they feel this, they feel this emotion because of an imagined, uh, imagination effect, right? They imagine themselves in that era and they think that's a bad guy, I don't like him. But I don't mind that. I don't mind that there's statues of guys that you might think are bad. And here's why. Here's why I think it's okay. Because statues are a window to history, right? Statues make you think about what happened historically. Makes you think about them in a more nuanced way than merely, oh, those were bad guys and those were good guys. And maybe that's all that it makes you think of, but it shouldn't. It should make you think, oh, I wonder a little bit about him. Statues are impressive things, right? They're beautifully constructed. I mean, when I remember when I was a kid, seeing statues and seeing fountains. And I remember my mom used to let us play in this um, fountain in front of the Capitol building in uh, Salem, Oregon. And it was a fine fountain. It wasn't particularly spectacular or anything, but you could play on it. And so you get your swim trunks on, you go there in the summer, and all the kids were playing in this fountain. They probably don't let you do that anymore because it's dangerous or something. But that's what we used to do as kids, right? And so whenever I'd see a fountain, most fountains you, you, you weren't allowed to play in. So whenever I saw a fountain, if you couldn't play in it, to me, it was like a waste. <laughs> it was like, oh, I can't play in that fountain? That's a waste. Like, that's like the best thing about fountains, right? So I always found fountains a little bit frustrating and annoying because I could play in them usually. But, but a statue, a statue was always impressive because you needed an artist. Like a, like a fountain could be designed by anyone, right? Just put a slab of, of concrete here, a piece of iron there, you know, squirty piece of, squirty bit of water and you're good. You got a fountain. But a statue, that took metic meticulous craftsmanship, right? You had to have a, a brilliant artist to do something that looked, that resembled the person that they were trying to, trying to create an impression of. So I always saw statues as incredibly Im impressive. And at the time, you know, when you're a kid, you don't think, oh, let me go on my, well, maybe they do now, but when I was a kid, I didn't go, oh, let me check my iPhone and see, you know, read a little bit about Lincoln because I saw this really impressive statue of him. But maybe I would, you know, if I was a kid today. Um, but anyway, statues are a window to history and they hopefully inspire you to learn more about history. And so they're valuable really no matter who they're of. Now, people will make this analogy. They'll say, well, having statues, a statue of General Robert E. Lee in America is like having a statue of Hitler in Germany. And to that, I say this. Maybe they should have a statue of Hitler in Germany. Maybe they should have a few statues of Hitler in Germany to remind them of what they did. <laughs> right? Just having a statue of a, of a person that we look at in history and say, that person was a monster. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Because a statue, I think people think about statues and they think, well, that's a statue is used to idolize someone. A statue is used to commemorate somebody great. But I don't think that's always true. Sometimes statues are, indicate, are, are used to indicate an event or to stand in for... Um, like an important battle or something like that, right? You know, it's not always to say this person was a great person. Sometimes it's to say, you know, remember this thing that happened, remember this time. Furthermore, I would say that General Lee was no Adolf Hitler. You should read about General, if you don't know anything about General Lee, you should look up 
about his life. He was actually a pretty fascinating person. He wasn't just evil defender of slavery. He was actually a fascinating man and not an entirely bad person. If you don't know about General Robert E. Lee, I challenge you to look him up and read about him even just a little bit. Just read his Wikipedia article. There's a lot of fascinating stuff about him. He's, a, he's an interesting guy. But okay, you don't want to look at the ugly, contentious history of America. I can understand that, right? You don't, Germans probably don't want to look at Adolf Hitler, and you don't want to look at Robert E. Lee, because it reminds you that some people are sometimes bad sometimes, and that's tough to deal with. You'd rather just see a, a Starbucks and an H&M. <laughs> okay, fine, let's vote on it. But don't tear down a statue just because you don't like it. I know I've already said this, but I'm gonna say it again. Why should a small band of degenerate Marxists get to decide which statues we keep up and which we topple. It doesn't make any sense. So, so I propose this. For every statue toppled by Antifa and Black Lives Matter activists, we erect a new statue of Donald Trump. A small minority is toppling statues without conferring with the rest of society. So, all right. We'll erect these statues of Donald Trump without conferring with them. Fair is fair. All right, well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. Good night. We have so many people who can't see a fat man standing beside a thin one without coming to the conclusion the fat man got that way by taking advantage of the thin one. There are going to be millions of Democrats that are going to vote with us this time around because they too want that promise kept. It was a promise for less government and less taxes and more freedom for the people.